While Teledad dominated over the past several months, its reign of terror would slowly be coming to an end. A new ban list was released on March 1st, 2009. Chaos Sorcerer, Dark Arm Dragon, Gladiator Beast, Bestiari, Goyo Guardian, Mizuki, Plague Spreader Zombie, Card of Safe Return, Emergency Teleport, and Reinforcement of the Army were all now limited to one copy each. Destiny Hero Malicious, Goblin Zombie, Green Baboon, Defender of the Forest, Rise of the Storm Monarch, Summoner Monk, Allure of Darkness, Destiny Draw, Gold Sarcophagus, Mind Crush, and Ultimate Offering were all now semi-limited to two copies per deck, and Manticore of Darkness, Phantom of Chaos, Twin-Headed Behemoth, Book of Moon, and Nobleman of Crossout were all now unlimited to three copies. But Yu-Gi-Oh! was not yet free from its dark past, as the alleged legal dispute between Upper Deck and Konami over Upper Deck's distribution of counterfeit cards had come to a head, and Konami had now seized direct control of the game and Upper Deck was out of the picture. In this series, both MBT and myself will be traversing the sands of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s history. Each episode will take a deep dive into Yu-Gi-Oh!'s past formats and unlock new strategies as new sets become available. Strap yourselves in because anything is possible. Welcome to the history of Yu-Gi-Oh!! If you want 5% off any singles or sealed product, click the affiliate links in the description and use code SEMO5. And clicking the TCG Player affiliate link before you shop helps support us to provide you with more amazing content. Yeah! Oh my god, we're in the lead! I never thought this day would come! Literal months of losing to Pot of Greed into Raigeki, and finally, finally, we have clawed our way to that 51% win rate. Oh, and it's only going up from here, folks. Can someone in the comments actually calculate my win rate throughout 2008? I think I went on like an 8-1 tear or something ridiculous. Uh, anyway, it is now April of 2009. 2008 is long behind us because in the interest of not boring you all to death, we have skipped about six months of consecutive Dark Arm Dragon formats. Now remember, it won about five SJCs during the time since you last saw it, and very little changed with the deck list over that period. Just keep in mind that the Dark Arm Dragon you've seen in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! isn't even representative of how ubiquitous that card was. Yikes. Anyway, this is a deck from SJC Anaheim, Jarrell Winston's second place profile, and it occurs in a very fraught time in Yu-Gi-Oh!'s history. By skipping all of these Dark Arm Dragon formats, we are making it more entertaining for you viewers, but we're also losing out on one of the most interesting things to ever happen in the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game, a lawsuit. Konami v Upper Deck. Now, many of you are so young that you only know Yu-Gi-Oh! as the card game promoted and managed by Konami, but for a long time, Upper Deck Entertainment was in charge of distributing and manufacturing Yu-Gi-Oh! cards. Konami v Upper Deck was a lawsuit that led to the dissolution of the partnership between Konami and UDE, who at the time were both manufacturing cards and running events for Konami. This occurred because Konami, in a separate piece of litigation, charged vintage sports cards with distributing repackaged Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card packages, including counterfeit rare cards. As part of the discovery process, Vintage supplied evidence that they had been able to make the counterfeits allegedly because of things given to them by Upper Deck Entertainment. Uh, as the discovery process continued, it became clear that tons of cards printed over the last several years were not, in fact, real Yu-Gi-Oh cards, but very, very convincing fakes. I actually have one right here, traded to me by Gage Nimnim himself. I'll hold it up to the camera, but the important part of this card is, though it appears to be a first edition Ultimate Rare Elemental Hero Flame Wingman, it's got a silver stamp in the corner, which is a telltale sign that something's up. Many, many, many of these cards were distributed. They are not hard to find, and to this day you have to be careful when purchasing old cards for this reason. As a result of this ongoing litigation, Konami assumed control of Yu-Gi-Oh! in its entirety, and that included running events. As a result, 
this period is actually pretty hard to get information about. There are SJCs that occur in April of 2009, but they're not publicized by Metagame because that organization has some ties to Upper Deck Entertainment, and they're not published by Konami because the infrastructure for reporting wasn't up and running. So basically, we have a ghost event that was extremely well attended, and the lists we are gathering are literally from old Duelist Grounds posts. This is one of those lists, Jarrell Winston's second place Lightsworn build. Now, there's not a ton that we could gather about SJC Anaheim, but what we do know is that Lightsworn was the deck to beat going in. It is a deck that was very explosive and very slightly less powerful than Teledad, and as a result, it rose to the top in the wake of Teledad's demise. It ended up falling to Jeff Jones, the Jeff Jones, who played Teledad? Are you kidding me? Half this deck was limited and he still showed up with Dark Arm Dragon, Emergency Teleport, and Pals. Now, for what it's worth, Jeff Jones' deck is very interesting and Simo will get into that in a second. But for now, I just want to give you an idea of what we're going to be playing in terms of Lightsworn. We've got Arrakis, Lightsworn Druid, two Celestia. You, of course, know the power of this card by now. Aaron, double Garroth, triple Honest, one Jane, double Judgment Dragon, I believe semi-limited at this point. Triple Lumina, double Lila, triple Necro Gardena, Plague Spreader Zombie, one Raikou, three Wolf, two Charge of the Light Brigade, that's a new addition since the last time you saw this deck released in Duelist Genesis, two Cold Wave, a Foolish Burial, a second Foolish Burial, Heavy Storm, Monster Reborn, Reincarnation, triple Recharge, double Beckoning Light, it discards your entire hand and then adds light monsters back from your grave, and a CCV. In the side, we've got Chaos Sorcerer, Gores, double Mobius, Phantom of Chaos, My Body is a Shield, X2, Brain Control, MST, Nobleman of Extermination, Soul Exchange, Three Royal Decree, and a Torrential Tribute. The extra is just a bunch of really, really powerful synchros. So, we are aiming to recreate a real duel that occurred at this event for which there is very little coverage. I hope it turns out completely differently than it did in reality. I don't, I don't know at this point. I mean... Some of the last few defeats we've had have been my own fault, I will admit. But last episode, Joseph just had the heart of the cards on his side. I'm sorry. Like, I, I don't think I was ever winning that in that circumstance. That was just unbelievable. Maybe karma's finally catching up to me for all the times I may have sacked Joseph in the past, but I think we're going to move on from that now, and we're entering a very interesting part of Yu-Gi-Oh's history, as a matter of fact, and that is the alleged uh, controversy between UDE and Konami, and that dispute, alleged dispute, actually made it very difficult to find written coverage from the events at this time. Why is that? Well, while there were some events still taking place, like SJC Detroit, which we're going to be taking decks from for this episode, since Konami was taking everything over from UDE, there was a bit of a transition phase, let's call it, and during that period, Konami was still trying to figure out exactly what they were going to do as they took over the game. And so as a result, coverage from this time was very scarce. There's only a few deck lists that are actually available from around this time. And then once we start getting into the national season in the summer around June and July, that's also when we start getting into Raging Battle and other sets like that, we start to see more coverage again. So this was actually a very difficult episode to research because there actually wasn't a lot of reference material to go off of, but we are going to be playing what I believe is probably Teledad's last hurrah, although I wouldn't exactly call this Teledad, but it definitely still resembles it in a lot of ways. This is Jeff Jones' Dark Skill Drain deck. Now, while this does play a lot of the components of a deck like Teledad did, you have to remember the March 2009 ban list is now in effect. What that means is that cards like Dark Arm Dragon are limited, Emergency Teleport is limited, a lot of the cards that made the deck as fierce as it was got hit on the ban list in some form or another. And so most players actually decided to pivot over to Light Sworn because Light Sworn was actually just almost completely untouched. And that actually had the majority representation at SJC Detroit. Gladiator Beast also had a fairly good showing as well. This was the only deck that would be considered a sort of dark deck that made the top 16 
and it actually won the event on top of it. Joseph and I are going to be recreating the first and second place final match of SJC Detroit, and we're going to be piloting this deck. This is going to be hilarious. So let's go ahead and do the card by card. First up, two copies of Beast King Barbaros. This card can be normal summoned with its attack becoming 1900, but with Skill Drain active, this attack immediately goes to 3000. The theory is with all the Light Sworn decks running around, Skill Drain actually just negates all of their effects. And so if you're able to stick big monsters like a Barbaros, like a Defender, hell, even Phantom Dragon, I suppose, then you're going to make it so that it's almost impossible for the Lightsworn player to be able to hit over any of your cards, and also makes it so that all their effects are nullified, and you're just playing a big beatdown game at that point. So it's a very interesting style of deck compared to what we've seen in the past, a lot more controlling. Speaking of having big monsters, one Cyber Dragon, one Dark Arm Dragon, we are still playing the one copy of Dark Arm Dragon we are allotted, but obviously not having nearly as many copies is not going to be as big of a bomb, but it's still a big threat nonetheless. One Dark Refer, two copies of Destiny Hero Defender. This card is actually just terrible, but paired with Skill Drain, it's a 2700 Defender, and that's actually pretty formidable in a format like this. Two copies of Malicious, one Stratos, two Krebons, two Mystic Tomato, one Phantom Dragon. I guess this card isn't like that bad by itself when your opponent special summons a monster, except during damage step. You can special summon this card from your hand, but two of your monster card zones cannot be used. That's a pretty interesting trade-off for a 2300 attack point monster. This deck is also citing a second copy of this, so that way you can get more aggressive with some larger beaters. The Plague Spreader and the Sangen routing out the monsters. For spells, two Allure of Darkness. We still have a pretty decent dark package, so this allows us to dig. One Brain Control, two Destiny Draw, the one Emergency Teleport, Heavy Storm, Reborn, Mystical Space Typhoon, Reinforcement of the Army, and one Smashing Ground. This is just to get anything else big out of the way. You can still special summon something like a Judgment Dragon, so being able to smash that out of the way makes sense. And then the Trap Cards, one Crush Card, one Mirror Force, two Phoenix Wing Wind Blast, three Skill Drain, three Solemn Judgment, one Torrential, and one Trap Dust Shoot. I just think this is such a unique looking deck for the time, and uh, I really got to give Jeff credit for that, because I think this is going to be a lot of fun. The extra deck's just every single good card we could be playing for the most part. The notable inclusions here from Crimson Crisis, the newest set to be released, are Dark Strike Fighter. This is the Gaga -ga, Ga Cowboy of the day, if you wish. You can basically, during your main phase one, tribute a monster, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the tribute to monster's level on the field times 200, it used to not be a once per turn. This is actually part of the errata of Dark Strike Fighter. So what you could do is if you have a way to just make this and your opponent's on low life, you can tribute off Dark Strike Fighter by itself and you just win the game automatically. Or you could just tribute off a bunch of things and just win like that. This card is so stupid. Enabled a bunch of FTKs, just not very fun. Also, Arcanite Magician's a new inclusion from the Crimson Crisis set as well. And then for the side deck, two copies of DD Crow, still a nice way to interrupt the opponent, especially because maybe Light Sworn decks would be wanting to get cards in the graveyard for JD. They do target stuff with Lumina and the like, so DD Crow's a pretty good interruption. One Gores if we need it. Two Legendary Jujutsu Master. I think this is primarily for Glad Beasts more than anything. The aforementioned second copy of Phantom Dragon. And for Traps, two Dust Tornado, two Metal Reflect Slime. This may be one of the only times this card has ever seen competitive play, but in the context with Skill Drain, seems pretty good. Two Mind Crush to be able to rip cards out of the opponent's hand, and three copies of Threatening Roar, so we do not get OTK'd. We really got to see this card shine in the last episode, and I'm really hoping that this deck is going to help us just turn the tables. We really got to get back on the scoreboard. Joseph is getting way too far ahead, and hopefully Light Sworn isn't going to allow him to snowball even further. So guys, that's going to do it for me. I am super excited to play this episode out. Let's see what happens. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to duel. So Joseph, you ready for another dad match? I think we've just been having so much fun playing dad that I thought we would just have to, have to keep playing dad a little bit more, don't you think? <laughs> I'm sorry to the viewers. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, we're uh, we're actually currently uh, broadcasting this from The Hague. Turns out that showing 15 dad mirrors back to back is in fact a war crime. Did not know this. Uh, we, we've got some good lawyers. Um, they're the people who represented Upper Deck, so I think we'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this is this is going to be a very interesting match for a very interesting format that there is unfortunately just not a whole lot of information about. Yeah, absolutely. From what we were able to decipher from like the few pieces of text we were able to find, it seemed like a very light sworn dominant format, which makes sense when you ban almost every conceivable.
conceivable good card in Teledad that yeah. everyone would go to the next best deck being Light Sworn because it's so explosive. And it's cool to see that while we, this is still a Dark Arm Dragon deck, this is like the most unique Dark Arm Dragon list I think I've ever seen. And so I'm really excited to see how this is going to play out. And we were talking about this off camera, but Dark Arm Dragon isn't going anywhere. It's just going to become a fixture of other decks, but it's not going to be nearly like the Teledad Tier Zero madness we've experienced up until now. This is a absolute cope deck list. It's basically what happens when all of my deck is banned and it's suddenly bad and inconsistent. Well, you can always throw some floodgates in there. Uh, <laughs> this is dad's last hurrah. And like you said, from here on out, it's a card that you play in Black Wings because sometimes you make it, not necessarily a deck in and of itself. Before we get started, though, just huge shouts out to Meep Moto 27 Thank you so much. Uh, really saved For our real. butts on this one. Yeah, Ugh. we were just scraping the bottom of every Pojo article, Duelist Grounds forum that we could find, and there was just nothing. So big shouts to you, Meep. You ready, buddy? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Let's go, baby. All right, so let's go ahead and shout out our patron. It is Israel Lockwood. Thank you so much for the support. Joseph, I got the generator up. How many are we doing, buddy? How many refreshes? Just pick scissors, buddy. It's just a waste <laughs> of time for me to tell you anything. All right, let me get one for the one game I have up on you. Oh, my God. You happy? It what was the rock. Fuck? Oh it was rock. Wow. It was rock. People, I don't know if like when I do these refreshes, how easily it is for people to see the flicker, but there is like a slight flicker and it was, it started as rock and then it went to rock again. So you got it. Congratulations. Wow. Maybe I'll actually finally win one of these fucking this matches. Is, this is huge. All right. Uh, stand by main one. All right. I'm going to begin with a copy of charge of the light brigade <laughs> fantastic uh to be fair i don't think we've really shown off this card yet so that's good <laughs> all right two names in the grave i'm already fucked it's, fantastic it's good, good games it's buddy good. good games <laughs> uh i'm going to add from my deck to my hand uh raiden probably, hand of the light sworn yeah we could go lumina pitch raiden summon raiden and then we make uh michael right that's how this works exactly yes that's exactly how it works mel right. felice in the process don't forget i'm gonna grab myself a Ryko, and then i'm gonna okay. set a card i could be anything literally anything <laughs> literally right, anything wow is that really all you were doing terrible okay this sounds great but uh you know i'm i'm realizing that going second for 15 matches in a row might have been a pretty good thing for me it's just triple wolf buddy it's just yeah. triple wolf okay uh so we'll go to main one here knowing you have Ryko set i don't like it I, I i don't like it i think i'm going to set one and i'm gonna set Two. Go ahead. Draw for turn, anything in standby. You're good. Okay, let's uh, flip up this Raikou. I am going to target this card right here. In response, I will activate Crush Card Virus. This should be much more live than it has been in the other games. Let's see it. Oh my God, that is really good. Okay, um, I'm going to lose Lila. Good. Uh, Celestia. Good. And Jane. Okay. And that's the remainder of my hand. Well, unfortunately, you still have a Lumina, so that's pretty good. <laughs> Lumina Foolish Necrogarden is still kind of scary okay uh then i'll wolves. trigger this sangen yep with the sangen i think i'll grab myself a mystic tomato that's fine uh i'm gonna normal summon a copy of lumina is that okay sure got the wolf off of the Ryko. i actually did miss that unfortunately yeah lumina's good you're on a bunch of uh dumb bullshit let's go for lumina's effect here i'm gonna pitch a necro gardener and summon out a lila I'll declare the effect of Lila targeting your set card. Is a solemn judgment. Oh, awesome. Well, son of a gun. I guess I will foolish burial sending a wolf. All right. Uh, ooh. It's a ton well, of damage. Am I, am I actually doing that at all? I could also get a plague spreader zombie to the graveyard and accomplish nothing. <laughs> ooh, that's a thinker. All right. That's uh, another great idea. Sure. Right, so we're going to go 221, 120. So on your uh, first attack of wolf. Ah, I see. Nothing. I'm fine. <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, oh my God. That would have been sick. Gores would have been, been sick, sick here. Yeah, unfortunately, right. it's not the case. We'll go end phase. I'm milling six here. It's going to be a lot. Let's see him. Oh, There's a wolf, son but of you a can't bitch. summon no. it. No. <laughs> yeah, no big deal, you did get a plague spreader, though, so that's pretty good. All right, we will draw. Anything yep. to stand by. No, no. What's interesting is that even though you have that plague spreader in grave, you actually can't summon it. Oh, yeah. Because your board is full of monsters that. Don't do anything. I will bring out this Mystic Tomato. I'll go to battle. I'm going to attack into your wolf. I'll take the seven, trigger the tomato. Yep. Let's go for another tomato. I'll attack wolf again. Uh, this walks in. You have three. You go for dad. You've got one dad. You can pop my entire board. I will Necro Gardener here. 
I figured you were going to have to eventually, so I had to do something about it. Okay, uh, main two then. I'm going to set two cards face down, and I will pass a turn. Go ahead. Crush card, turn one. What is it? It's reborn. <laughs> Well, that's funny. Okay. Uh, it doesn't actually do anything here, but uh, it, it is quite fun. Well, I suppose I'll go to battle phase. Uh, I'm going to attack with a wolf. Okay, so I'll take 700 here. Trigger the tomato. Going to grab a Krebons. Let's go wolf into the Krebons. I will take, or I'll pay the eight to negate. I'm going to walk Raiko in here. Had a feeling. Yep. So you'll take a thousand. Oh, shoot. Yeah, that's correct. Second main. Uh, I'm going to activate Plague Spreader's effect in Graveyard. Reborn back on top to revive him. Yep. Is that okay? So with Plague Spreader Zombie, that gives you tuner access. All right. Uh, I will sink. Uh, I'm going to sink Plague Spreader and the Spellcaster Lina to the Graveyard. Ooh, to make Arcanite? Tempest Magician. Oh, Tempest Magician. Okay. And if you'll permit me, uh, I'll kill you with her effect. <laughs> um. Now, how does this work? This card has never received a card printing with problem solving card text uh, probably because konami would like to forget that this card ever existed uh, i went and looked it up the first effect that puts spell counters on this is a trigger effect so you do have a chance to respond before i fire the ignition i will retain priority if you will allow it to resolve i do have something there i will phoenix wing wind blast sure. the tempest magician Pitching an Allure. Last card in hand is Dad. I have to be Dad Krebons. Well, say la vie. We had to go for it. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I was like, the, I'm like, I don't know if there's a card, but Tempest Magician would kill me. Yes, that's correct. All right, we'll go to end. I'll mill. Yes, yeah, so Reborn is going away. I was oh, contemplating wow. putting uh, Plague Spreader back on top because then Plague Spreader, if uh, you presume I have Dad at this point, right. if I Dad you then you're just drawing into a Plague Spreader and no board. And then Monster Reborn, I probably would have killed you the next turn anyway. So right. that, that was the thinking. But then the milling off of Lumina and Lila forced me into a different direction. All right, I'll draw. Ooh, that's pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and activate Rhoda. I think there is only... I was going to say there's only one target, but there is multiple. Uh, we'll get the boy. Uh, we will summon the boy, trigger his effect. My life points are pretty low. I'm actually going to grab Destiny Hero Defender. <laughs> sure. Uh, and then you did call it, I do have the Dark Arm Dragon. Yep. What are we losing here? Everything? So potentially I do have a couple of things I can do. So I want to see if there's a better route. I don't know what you're going to be drawing for turn. And you know, the last few episodes, your draw for turn has just been fantastic every single time. I've thought I've had you dead to rights. So I want to think about this for a moment. So with Dark Arm Dragon, I am going to do cleanup duty here. Sure. So let's just kill everything. You got it. Uh, I don't have game here, so I am just going to hit for a lot of damage. So this is uh, 5,800 in total. And uh, I wish I could make my Dark Strike Fighter, but unfortunately, as you said, he is a level 7. I am going to sink here because I don't want to leave the Krebons on the field when I don't have the life points to pay for it. So I will bring out a Goyo, and I think I will just pass on that. Go ahead, buddy. Crush card, turn 2. Oh, I'm like one-time JD, but that doesn't even do it. Nope. Uh, well, it doesn't matter. It was a Celestia, and that Celestia. is going to be it from me. Yikes. Okay, game one. Game one. Went first, lost the game, you know. Uh, tale as old as time. Ah, man. <laughs> I was so close on that one, but uh, the last life point is all that matters. Um, that's what yeah. I like about this list, you know? Obviously, it is a really powerful dad strategy and shell, but it also just plays a shitload of really strong trap cards. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. But, I mean, you almost had it. You were only, mm. like, one good hit off, and then yeah, this, it would me. not have come to fruition. Go ahead, buddy. Let's see what you got. All right, so keep in mind that that last game, you opened uh, dad. So, you know, let's see how good you are if you don't open dad. Uh, okay, I'm going to recharge sure. for a couple of cards. And then Got I'm going to do it again because I drew a Got fucking a wolf. wolf. <laughs> That's fine. We're just we're just not making wolf this game. Oh, that is not okay. I'll set one pass. Oh, this is perfect. All right, I'll draw. Got to be Raiko, right? I mean, it's got to be Could be, be anything, buddy. Raiko. Could be anything. It's got to be Raiko. What if it's I'm going to lead the charge with Sangin. Yeah. It's hidden. Show it to me. It is Raiko. Uh, okay. I... It will do it. I will do it. Yeah. Oh, those are three good okay. ones. All right. Those are three good ones. Uh, I will get my Sangin search now with Sangin. I'll grab Malicious. And then second main, I will just set one card and I will pass it over to you. Fool. 
I'll normal summon a Lumina Lightsworn Summoner. Is that okay? That is fine. Would you like to use the effect? I mean, kind of, yeah. Uh, I'm going to use the effect. Uh, I think I'm going to pitch a Necro Gardener. Targeting. Uh, wolf. Uh, in response, I will activate Skill Drain. Ah, uh, whatever. We're getting there. I'll get in for a thousand. I'll take another thousand. All right, I'll set one. You're good to go. I'll draw. Anything standby? Nope. Main one. Let's start by special summoning a copy of Dark Greffer pitching this Mally. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty good. Let's go ahead, banish the Mally for a Mally. All of this works under skill drain. We'll get him out. Then here we shall Eteli. You kidding me? So real quick, let me just run this by you. Uh, what's Eteli at? Uh, Eteli's at one. Okay, cool. <laughs> and what's a Dark Greffer at? Uh, one. Okay, and what's Sangan at? It's at one. Oh, okay. No, you know, I'm just checking. Yeah. You know, just yeah, just yeah. keep it track. Keep it track. Go ahead, okay. buddy. All right, so uh, we'll grab this Carbonzo. out. Yep. Then let's go ahead and sync up here. Oh yeah, you love to see it. Weird thing is like we're under skill drain. So I do need to take that into account. Uh, if you do have decree, then it possibly matters what I make, but then you could potentially have something as well. I'm gonna make colossal fighter. Uh, we'll go to battle. All right, that sounds good. Let's hit. I take seven and yep. then I take 28. 28. That's a rough one. Yeah, it's not the end of the world. I'll uh, set one and go ahead. All right, end phase, you sniffed it out. It was a royal decree. That's what I figured. Go ahead, buddy. Stand by me. Okay, let's start with charge of the light brigade. That's a good one. I'm going to grab a Lumina. We're going to normal summon Aaron. Combat. Got the honest? I do not. Oh, even better. You have JD, probably. Okay. Yeah, I was going to sure. say, but what I do have. <laughs> All right. Yeah, uh, I'm going to summon JD. He'll use his effect. Uh, sure. Yeah, this is where getting Stardust would have been much better. So you take a thousand and we lose everything. Yep. All right, what I hit? And it was a judgment. Oh, thank God. Okay. I don't know. Go ahead, buddy. I'll draw. This is the first time we've seen Judgment Dragon, to be fair. It I is. just realized. It is. Yeah. All right. Now I have oh, to figure out up. how the fuck I'm outing this. I got a mill four. Oh, yeah, mill four. Yeah, that's important. Oh, wow, oh, it really was Necro important. Garda. Perfect. It's usually important. <laughs> it was. Now I have to play through three of that stupid card. Okay. God, this card is so good. <laughs> it's crazy strong. And I believe semi-limited at this point. I think so. And you you wonder why everyone went to Light Sword after all the Dark Arm components got hit. I don't you know, wonder at strange. all, buddy. Anything I do just immediately gets blown up by JD. You can swing for 3K, which means you just need to have a way to get 3,000 more damage onto the board. And you do uh, know I know you Lumina. have a Lumina and you can discard any card for Lumina, which means you basically would have game at that point. Go ahead. <laughs> Stand by main. All right, what am I scared of? Uh, gores exactly. Well, I guess I'll put you on, gotta have it. We'll go Lumina. Sure. Uh, I'm gonna pitch Garroth targeting Wolf. That's fine. Combat. Uh, excuse me, sir. I had something on the resolution of Wolf. I don't know why you're scared of Gores when you should be scared of my Phantom Dragon. <laughs> this card is so bad. Yeah, that's fine. I, I'm, uh, I'm going to put it in defense, actually. I'm okay with but, that. Yeah. What the fuck is this yeah. card doing in this list? It's protecting me from dying, so that's not bad. <laughs> uh, I'll attack it. All right, uh, then I will attack with Lumina. Uh, yeah, I'll attack with the wolf, too. Oh, you're in a weird position, After too. After the attack? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. It's like, if you have Gores, <laughs> I'll just JD it. I'm, I'm pretty sad. I know, with that. exactly. All right, we'll go exactly. to end phase. I'll mill seven. Go for it. Five, six, seven. Jesus Christ. All right, go ahead. Wish I saw the third in there, too. We also have three Necro Gardeners, so I'm not really too worried. All right, I'll draw. Oh, that's funny. I don't know if it's good enough, though. I'm going to start by firing a Destiny draw. Ooh, that is... this defender. That's a good one. I can't believe the defender didn't come up, dude. That's crazy. I mean, I just drew it, so I think it might be a little bit too late for that. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I have to. I don't really have much of a choice here. Okay, uh, I am going to smash and ground your Judgment Dragon. Ooh, okay. I'm still with you. I'm still with you. I'm gonna reborn my Colossal Fighter. Mm, all right. Battle phase. Yep. I'm gonna hit into Lumina. And I'll Necro Gardener. Uh, main two, I will set a card and I will pass it to you. I'll draw, stand by main. Oh God. Could be another Judgment Dragon. I think you still have one left. Yes, you do. Didn't think we were gonna keep this going. <laughs> I'll be honest, Phantom Dragon came in clutch. I guess he sort of did. It's like a bad Gores in a way. I like the reason you play it, I get is because of skill drain, right? Like if you have skill drain up, it's just bigger than almost everything that the other person can summon. I get that, but still a strange here. one. Go ahead. Still possibly uh, Honest JD as well. All right, we'll draw. Stand by main. Uh, I will go to battle, I think. Yeah, I need to make you go through these stupid Necro Gardeners at some point. So we'll tempt it, Lumina. Am I okay with this? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, then main two. I will set another card. Pass the turn. Stand by main. 
Let's see if I really want to do that. Uh, yeah, I'm not doing that. Uh, he's just <laughs> he's just very slightly too large. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, we'll draw. Yep. Uh, I will hit it. Sure. Main two. Uh, I will pass. Oh, we are getting blasted here. Go ahead. Draw. I can't believe we're still in this at any reasonable life total. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Go to battle, I guess. Uh, what's he at? Uh, I think he's at lethal he is, because yeah. you have warriors in your grave. I have two. I have three warriors in mine. I'm pretty sure you have at least three in yours. Right. Yeah. No, so I sure. yeah. I mean, you still have uh, necro gardeners. So I mean, it's not like it's over. Over. Yeah, I'll go for a necro gardener here. Big surprise. Sure. That's fine. Uh, main two. I think I'll just pass. Go ahead. I'm going to MST the old one here. This is a skill drain. I'll set one pass. Okay, we'll draw. Okay. What the hell are you setting? All your necros are engraved. I mean, you still have one engraved. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we'll allure of darkness. I'm going to get rid of the plague spreader here. I'm going to rota. Yeah. That's a nice one. Grab a Stratos. Yep. Uh, we'll bring out the boy. Go to battle. Yep. And hit with Colossal Fighter. It is Arcus. And then we'll hit for 18. Sure. And main two. Oh, it did have the gores. Okay. Womp. Wow. I'm going to get an 18 token. Sure. Then I think. Yeah, I'll pass the turn. Draw for turn, stand by main. You would tell me if that set card is a solemn, right? Of course I would, Joseph. See, you're saying that, but I feel like you wouldn't. Okay, realistically, what could you have? Crush card? It could be crush card. It could be wing blast. It could be skill drain. Solemn. I mean, Solemn is so bad for you right now. Okay. I'm going to tribute the token for Celestia. Ooh. I'm pretty much playing with my hand face up on the table here. Now, here's a question. Does Celestia trigger if you can't mill? Well, Celestia is not going to trigger because uh, oh, I didn't oh, trigger the Oh, oh okay. 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 It's also uh, optional, fair. you know? <laughs> I think I'm actually <laughs> fine. Is JD semi'd at this point, or is it still at three? I didn't want to tell you. JD is semi'd. I do not have access oh. to fucking JD. Okay, okay. Well, that makes me feel better. I'm I'm so worried about you know dad being at you know all these different quantities and you know JD matters. Okay, that changes things now. Tributing for Celestia. That tells me that uh, there's two honest engraves. You probably have the third honest then. So this no is the last the last card good. in deck is an honest. Come on. It could be. I mean, it could be. Could, I guess theoretically. All right, you know what? I'm doing it. Soloming here. I'm dead if you if I don't, because then you can just kill me with honest and gores. Now I have to think. You might be able to kill me anyway, but it's, I know I'm 100% dead if you have honest and that happens. Yeah, no, I mean, that is that is correct. You are correct. I have to think about what the top card of my deck is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a better player would know, but I did some boarding and now I'm not so sure. If I hit the Stratos, uh, how much do I do? This would be 900. 900? Oh, buddy, you got to be shitting me. That's so great. I mean, I don't think I have another choice. Uh, I'm going to go to combat and walk over the Stratos. Okay, so I'll take the nine. Yep, uh, you are good to uh, go. That actually does put Colossal Fighter to 3,600 now. Uh, that Colossal Fighter might as well read Infinity Attack for all I'm concerned. I mean, it'd be pretty good. Okay, so main one. So I can attack Gores. You have a final Necro Gardener, so you can protect. So you're not like dead. You're drawing your last card. So you have three cards. So I should be able to possibly decipher what you have. There's only one Charge of the Light Brigade in the graveyard, I noticed. Mm. I don't... What is Charge of the Light Brigade at in this format, Joseph? Uh, I'm not exactly <laughs> sure, buddy. Uh... <laughs> so that's either at this, two or it three, isn't at one. <laughs> It isn't at one. So it's either at two or three. So you either have one in your hand or one or two in your hand or one in your hand to deck potentially. I'm almost certain you have an honest. So your your hand could just literally be two, uh, 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 honest and a charge and then another charge or something like that. Oh, that's funny. There's only two wolves in your graveyard as well. I don't know if you if this deck was playing two wolves. It could have been, but there could be a wolf somewhere <laughs> as well, which would be very funny. This is strange. Okay, I'm just going to go to battle. I'm going to have you waste the neck regard enough. God, that's so many attack points. Yeah, I'll, I'll burn the Gardener here. Then main two, I'm going to set one. And I'm going to set one. And I'll pass it over. Okay, uh, first things first, I am going to activate the effect of Plague Spreader. We're going to put okay. this card on top of my deck. All right, we're going to normal honest. Going to sink here. If you will permit it, we will go into... Do you understand how much I want Honest to be a fucking spellcaster right now? <laughs> I would for kill Tempest for it. Magician. We're going to go into Goyo. Uh, combat. Goyo into the set card. Destiny Hero Defender. Do you want him? Yes. Uh, second main will pop this bad boy to defense, and you are good to go. Okay. I will draw. 
Yep. Uh, during my standby phase, I get to draw a card. Yeah, go for it. And I'll take it, I guess. Main one. Uh, I guess I'll go to battle. I'll hit into Goyo. I'll take eight here. Yep, put you down to eight. Then main two, I'll set a card and pass. Go ahead. All right, buddy. Just like I drew it up. The last card in my deck. Fucking charge of the light brigade. Ah. <laughs> Oh, man. I was like, what the hell could you possibly? It was yeah. the wolf. Okay. <laughs> uh, this one was doomed from the start. The double wolf Jeez. opener. I should have known. Oh, my God. This Holy a, fuck. This was a weird one. Um, Jesus Christ. I mean, Dark Arm Dragon, of course, an extremely powerful deck. I can't believe that Phantom Dragon won you that game. It, it, you were what at 550. miserable card. Yeah. I was. No, I had, I, was. I had set up the line where I could go like um, normal, honest, uh, reborn plagues, send the remaining card in my hand to the grave to Tempest Magician for two, which does a thousand, except I didn't have any fucking spellcasters. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, and now the Lila, wait, where'd she go? Oh no, yeah. I mean, it's it's not Dark Strike Fighter. It's not Dark Strike Fighter. I was actually very concerned that your last card was Monster Reincarnation. I boarded it so, out. So I boarded it. Oh out. no! What's, what are the chances it will matter? I thought, and I found out what they were. It was a hundred percent. So I thought that what your plan was was to stack anything and then draw into Reincarnation, pitch it, get JD back, summon JD, nuke the board, and then be able to just kill me. I had a wind blast to be able to at least respond so I didn't die, mm -hmm. but then that fucking puts the JD on top of your deck. <laughs> what's, so, the, uh, what's the other set? This is the one I was worried about. It was an MST. Oh, was son a of a bitch. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. it was nothing. Uh, yeah. Let's let's get a, an errata of this game where, uh, in fact, Wolf is a spellcaster and also can be normal summoned. Sure. Um, <laughs> I was I had some really cute lines that made Dark Strike Fighter as well, uh, but uh, just not through back row. Uh, a lack of a nine, uh, a lack of really good sixes that aren't exactly Goyo. I mean, there was just a lot that went wrong, both in the ex like the uh, amount of synchro monsters that are available and the mills this game. But uh, that's sure. Light Sworn, baby. You live by the that mills, is. you die by the mills. And uh, this game, I died twice by the mill. <laughs> this is pretty funny, though, because had I wind blasted the JD in that hypothetical scenario, I would have drawn judgment for turn, set the judgment. You draw the JD to summon it, I judgment it, and then you die to deck out. Good I was enough. trying to find a way to deck you out with Defender, but unfortunately, uh, Defender has to be in face up defense position to activate and resolve his effect so Hilarious. that would have been funny could have come up could have come up this deck was very fascinating though uh just again not your traditional dark arm deck by any means plays a much different tempo yep and i was i was immediately regretting not going into stardust dragon when you did the decree into the jd line mm -hmm. but colossal fighter actually ended up putting in work in the end and i think having just that sizable body had this been stardust dragon you could have easily walked over it with something like gores in this exact situation so colossal fighter definitely did a lot of heavy lifting there in the end uh, no, even though Colossal it was, you know, Fighter <laughs> is, I mean, th he's the boy. He's so big. Yeah. Uh, my only out to this card was, I mean, you saw the turn. Tribute summoning a Celestia and then honesting over it because you were at a low life total. I don't have a really compelling out to this if I'm at low cards in deck because outside of JD and Celestia, I mean, what else am I doing to remove individual monsters? Right, and even honest against a Colossal Fighter isn't good enough, which is why I actually went into it because even if you kill it, I just bring it back. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, it's kind of a neg on your side. I take a bunch of damage, of course, obviously, but I mean, the fact that you don't actually kill it, if you don't have multiple honest or a way to actually clear it entirely, like with Celestia's actual effect if you can trigger it mm -hmm. then uh he's just a menace i mean just I, i'm gaining new respect for these individuals i already had respect for goyo guardian like he's insane right but like cards like colossal fighter stardust dragon in the first synchro era i mean these these cards are just uh, insane they are so broken so powerful i think this was a good little showcase of how the format started to slowly pivot away from dark arm dragon just being absolutely rampant now we're starting to see you know all these light sworn decks and as a matter of fact we get to see uh some new decks in the next episode right joseph we do finally we are leaving dad format i'm so sick of this <laughs> goddamn deck uh but it will soon be a distant memory uh only a one of inclusion in oh god i can't remember the deck it's some kind of color and then some kind of like body part i uh has something to do with the the damage step if i recall correctly yeah. no um 
Blackwing comes Blackwing. out. Blackwing, <laughs> and uh, I, I it's am really good. after progression series because, as most of the fans know by this point, I didn't play around this time, and neither did you really. After the progression series, I just fell in love with Black Wings, not because I got to you know wreck gauge for ten episodes. I mean that helped. <laughs> it helped definitely, but just being able to see how powerful these cards were at the time, I can't wait to see it contextually, right? Like going up against yeah. the Light Swarms and the uh, Gladiator Beast, and there's even decks like Synchro Cat we haven't even gotten to yet either courtesy of you know billy break mm -hmm. next episode's gonna be a lot of fun you know people oh. stuck through the dad but i think it's gonna be a lot of fun your reward is gonna be one of the most interesting formats of all time and uh it dovetails very nicely into edison which people play to this day right and i'm really really excited to try this bad boy out and if you need to be convinced about the power of black wings um it actually topped this sjc with exactly sirocco bora Kalut. <laughs> Right, like there was n <laughs> there was no Shura, there was no Gale, and people were already taking names with the deck. So uh, yeah. get excited. It's going to be real sick. So guys, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the History of Yu-Gi-Oh! Have to shout out the patrons as always. So big shouts to Shadow1317, Sean Alling Jr., Joshua Schley, Shotagonist, Cameron Smith, Angeoko, Tim00, X3, Ika Ironfang, Pony Starkey, and Musa, Michael Dente, Dan the Manhoven, Part 2, Synchro Guy, Ole, Mystic Walk, Sylvia Wild, Inuna Taisho, Draconic, Dolly Wap, Jarvis Martin, Logan Thomas, Peter Gregory, Thomas Nelson, Jordan Coons, Calvin, Colty, Iron Bladesman, Pure Ace, Jesse Wood, Turner Agasm, Brother Paul, Chris Hood, Gage's Third Leg, Lumpy, Nehru Celeste, David Liu, Rockley325, Lane Rogers, Silent Agent 216, I side in Grand Maju and Salad, Sky Rose, Dylan Hunter, Yusuf Aslan 05, Garth Ox DOW, John 2 Base, App at the Astro, Brody Eastwood, Dace Allen, Carlos DT, Flannel Daddy, Speedroider Riot, and Shane Corrin. Thank you so much for watching the video, and we will see you next time.